to the Latisms Podcast. I'm your host, Evelyn Lamb. In each episode, we invite a Hispanic or Latinx mathematician to share their journey in mathematics. Today, I'm very happy to be talking with Rosaura Uskanga. Thanks so much for joining me today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, I was born in Veracruz, Mexico. My family moved to the U.S. when I was 11 years old. And I actually didn't speak English when we first moved here. So um, as you can imagine, the first few years in the U.S. were very hard for me. Um, I come from a family who believes that school and education is really important. My parents were um, my biggest supporters when it came time for me to go to college. And then when I decided to pursue higher education, I attended uh, the University of Texas at Arlington for my undergraduate degree. And then I moved to Oklahoma and got my master's at Oklahoma State University. And that's where I'm currently at uh, as a grad student working on my PhD. Um, At my time at the University of Texas at Arlington, I actually met my husband. um, And then we've been together ever since. And so did you um, move to the Dallas area from Mexico? Yes. Yeah. So we moved directly um, from Veracruz to Dallas and then lived there. Um, I lived there my whole life until I moved to Oklahoma to go to uh, Oklahoma State University. Okay, I grew up in Dallas. So when I saw UT Arlington on your CV, I was thinking, I was wondering if you had a Dallas connection. Oh, yeah, definitely. (laughs) Yeah. So um, what, what were some of your early experiences with math? How did you end up discovering that you liked math? Well, so I've always liked math since I was very little. It was always one of um, my mom's favorite subjects, and she would always help me with my math homework. Um, So already from a very young age, I learned to like math. Um, My dad also really liked math, so I sort of got that from both of them in a way. Um, However, I started to really, really like it when I moved to the U.S. Um, I didn't understand what was really happening in my classes when I came here, Um, I was in middle school at the time because I didn't speak English. And then in some of my classes, I was even bullied for not knowing English. So school was just hard overall. But math almost felt like that one class, it was the safe space for me where I could just go and focus on school and not have to worry about anything else. I didn't need to know English to understand what was going on. So it automatically became one of my favorite subjects. And then um, I guess I worked so hard in it that it was also one of my best subjects. So even throughout high school, I tried to take as much math as I was allowed to take, which um, sadly just ended up being up to Calc 1. Um, But math was always the class that I looked forward to the most throughout the day. And were your teachers encouraging of your interest in math? Um, Not really in um, the middle school or high school levels. I felt like I was a lot more encouraged once I got to UT Arlington um, by my professors in math. And who were some of the professors who mentored you um, in college and then in graduate school? In like an official mentor role, I did my um, honors thesis for my undergraduate under Dr. Dimitar Grancherov, and he was one of uh, my biggest mentors. Um, I think that was the first time that I actually had done real math research and I just became so interested and he just made it seem so awesome. Um, And then of course there were other professors that um, encouraged me to pursue math. There was Dr. Shipman. Um, She was my analysis one teacher and she also made math so much fun that I thought, you know, this is certainly something I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, There was Dr. Cordero who also really encouraged me to pursue math. Oh, I, Minerva Cordero? Yes, oh, yes. Oh, she was on this podcast last season. It was really nice to talk with her, too. Yeah, she's awesome. She was never um, one of my formal teachers, so I never took a class from her. But um, she was always really supportive. Um, and can you tell me a little bit about the graduate program that you're in now? Yes. So I'm currently a PhD student um, at Oklahoma State. I... My PhD, when I graduate, will be a PhD in mathematics, but it's a little bit different than um, other PhDs. So all of my courses are in math, and the only thing that's different from a regular math PhD is that my um, dissertation will be in math education. 
So um, as I said, everything is, all the classes are the same as any other math PhD. And then just my dissertation will be a little different. Yeah. So you're doing research and education, but with um, the very focused uh, math subject background. Yes, exactly. And what in particular are you studying in math education? So I'm really interested in the teaching and learning of undergrad mathematics, but specifically for me um, in abstract algebra, it was always one of my favorite subjects in school. And that's actually a class that uh, I took from, well, algebra one I took from Dr. Grancherov, and then algebra two I took from Dr. Vancliff, and I just loved it so much that it became so interesting to me. Um, and then when I got into education, I thought, you know, that's the perfect combination, looking at how students think about concepts in abstract algebra, and then also how they might be able to discover the concepts on their own. So my dissertation specifically um, will actually investigate how students understand the concept of function in the context of abstract algebra. So I'm going to focus on aspects that are particularly important in abstract algebra, like well the fineness, injectivity, and things like that. Interesting. I mean, I guess from my very naive point of view as someone who doesn't, has never done any research in math education, I think of that as like studying how seven-year-olds develop math concepts, not necessarily how adults who are learning them develop it. It must be really interesting to be looking at the way adults learn. So it is to me. Um, a lot of math ed research has specifically focused on um, younger kids um, in the past, but I think a lot of people now are trying to look at how we can make our undergraduate curriculum better and how we can help these students succeed in classes and understand the concepts in a better way. And as part of that, have you taught any abstract algebra classes? I have not taught. My advisor currently has taught abstract algebra in the past, and I have um, sort of shown up to the classes and helped out. The way he teaches the class is sort of different. There's no uh, lecture. It's more um, activity-based. And um, so I'm able to come in and help the students, and we work through problems, and it's just really, really fun. Yeah, it must be. I loved my ab abstract algebra class when I was in college, and um, yeah, just such a mind-opening part of math. Yeah, it's the first time you really see things that you haven't seen before. And to me, you know, to me, it's so cool. Backing up a little bit, do you remember when you decided you were going to be a mathematician or, you know, a math education researcher, but when you decided, like, for real, this is what you were going to do with your career? So I was already in college. Um, I was in an anal my analysis one class with Dr. Shipman, and she sort of was doing some research in um, math education as well in that class. And one of the PhD students at the university at the time in the math department, um, he was getting his PhD in math education, and he came into this analysis one class um, to sort of interview students and get some data for his dissertation. And when I talked to him about what he was doing and what this was for, that's when I really found out um, about math education. And I just thought, you know, that was so interesting. And that's really what I wanted to do. So um, that's really the experience that got me into finding out more about math ed and really wanting to go into this area. Several people I've talked to for this podcast talked about that they didn't know when they were in high school or college that you could even continue to do research in math. And I guess perhaps math education would be a little different situation, but, but were you really aware of like a, a PhD as a career option for you before you got to college? Oh, no. I got into, um, I became a math major because my parents we're sort of like, you know, you've always liked math, you're good at math, why don't you try it out? And I was like, well, I don't know what I want to do, so sure, I'm going to get a degree in math and then see what happens. And then it was just these experiences and, you know, talking to some of these professors at UT Arlington and seeing um, the research that they did and finding out um, about the things they were interested in, the way I really decided that this was something I wanted to pursue as a career. And so... That's when I decided that I was going to continue after my undergrad and get a master's and then follow up with a PhD. My master's was at, here at Oklahoma State in pure math, um, and it was under 
Dr. Mantini. She was my advisor for my master's. How did you pick that program to go to? Originally, I was interested, as I said in my undergrad, I found out about math education. And then I became really interested and that decided that that's what I wanted to do. So I looked for programs um, that had a math education degree, but I wanted something that was really math focused because I knew that I wanted to go into a higher um, level of math at the undergraduate level. So I wanted to go into abstract algebra, um, maybe linear algebra. So I wanted something where I was, first of all, going to be really prepared in math. And then second of all, where I could still do my education, uh, the math education part of it. And so I looked at schools everywhere. And then I came and visited Oklahoma State when I got accepted. And I just loved the department. I loved how friendly everyone was, how supportive everyone was. And I just thought that this would be the place where I would thrive the most. And you've talked a little bit about some of the college professors who helped you find your path. Um, are there other people that you look up to now in math, um, kind of as role models as you're finishing your PhD? Oh, my God. So many people. Um, uh, you know, the people that I mentioned um, from UT Arlington, and I'm sure that I left some people out, um, but really a lot of my, the people that I admire the most um, are a lot of the women in mathematics because I think I just never thought that it was something I could do as a career and seeing these successful women um, follow their their paths in math and be able to you know be amazing researchers just let me really know that um, I could also be one of them and I could also do this um, but there are so many people that I admire uh, my advisor John Paul uh, He's been an amazing advisor, and he is so good at helping me think up through um, all of the stuff that I have to do with my dissertation. Um, his area is also in abstract algebra, so, you know, reading his papers is just so amazing. Um, there's several of the people here who are in math education who, you know, I can only aspire to be like, Dr. Mike Ortman, Dr. Michael Tallman. Um, Dr. Allison Dorco. There's just so many people that I've met throughout my life that are just amazing. And if I can ever get to a level where they're at, then I would say I've become, I've made it. I know you're still finishing your PhD. Um, do you have uh, ideas of what you want to do with your career after you graduate? Well, I would want to continue looking into student thinking in abstract algebra. But um, having been here for a while and seen the different um, paths and careers that uh, a lot of the mathematicians and math educators here have taken and the different research areas that they are has really sort of broadened my view of math education. And I think um, eventually I may want to um, open up a little more my focus and maybe look at some things um, related to student affect um, and things like that. What does student affect mean? So it just really means thinking about um, the student emotions, um, things like I did a project, a book, writing a book chapter with uh, one of the professors here on student uh, anxiety in mathematics. And so doing that book chapter has just opened my mind so much to other factors that are emotional. Oh, yeah, that's a huge part of it for sure. Well, and now I've learned a new vocabulary word for the day. <laughs> so how have you uh, overcome challenges in your academic career? Um, so I think the main thing is just perseverance. You know, um, there are things that will show up that are hard. And there are times where things have just, I've just been stuck and I don't know what to do. But I think the most important part is just you have to persevere. You have to continue working. If it's something that is important to you and that you want to do um, academically and in research, you just have to try, you know, you have to push yourself. Yeah, that could be so hard to do. I'm sure having the help of a supportive department and advisor really helps with that. Oh, for sure. My advisor is um, one of my biggest supporters, but really everyone here in the department. Um, I can go to anyone anytime that um I'm stuck or I feel frustrated and they're always just willing to talk to me and to push me. 
My husband is also um, one of my biggest support systems. Anytime that I just feel frustrated by my work or my research, um, I'm able to talk to him and he is always willing to listen and to push me to continue to pursue my dream. And you've talked a little bit about the importance of seeing women, uh, you know, successful women mathematicians as a way to to know that, that this is something that you can do. Um, I'd imagine also as a Hispanic woman, um, seeing uh, Hispanic and Latinx mathematicians in role models uh, as role models could be important as well. Can you t- talk a little bit about that and the importance of things like Hispanic Heritage Month to you? Yeah, so um, definitely seeing Hispanic mathematicians is so important. I've sort of been um, a little, you know, lucky that I've gone to places where there are some. So as I mentioned, Dr. Minerva Cordero was just such an influence to me to see a Hispanic um, female mathematician um, and know that I could do that too. Um, Here, um, one of my first classes at Oklahoma State was the um, graduate algebra class. And then I took that with Dr. Barcini, who is also a Hispanic female mathematician. And it's just so encouraging to see Hispanics um, and to see myself represented. And I think that's what's so important about Hispanic Heritage Month. You know, it's a time where we can say, um, we can focus on Hispanics and realize that they contribute a lot to this country and that they are a huge important part um, of our, you know, the culture in the whole country and um, a huge important part for our communities. So do you have any uh, final um, advice or anything that you'd like to close with? Um, So I just want to, you know, make sure that anyone who is listening and that um, wants to pursue a career in mathematics but doesn't feel like maybe they have what it takes, you know, you, you need to try it. I guarantee that you probably do have what it takes and, you know, try to surround yourself with people who will support you in um, continuing your dream and pursuing what it is that you're interested in and who are willing to help you out whenever you get stuck and push you forward. Very good message to leave with. (laughs) Thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. I'm so glad that you um, asked me to participate. Thank you for listening to the Latisms podcast. It's produced by me, Evelyn Lamb, and made possible by a Tensor Summa grant from the Mathematical Association of America. Our music is Volvore by La Floresta. Latisms is an initiative to celebrate the accomplishments of Hispanic and Latinx mathematicians. It was founded in 2016 by Alexander Diaz Lopez, Pamela Harris, Alicia Prieto Langarica, and Gabriel Sosa. You can find more information about the project at latisms.org. That's L-A-T-H-I-S-M-S dot O-R-G. Join us next time to hear from another inspiring mathematician.